Hi, we're here at the 2022 University of Virginia Investing Conference with Eshwar Prasad, uh, economics professor at Cornell University. Dr. Prasad, in your session, um, you talked a lot about maybe some of the merits and considerations of digital currencies and, and their ability to, to, to solve certain types of problems. And I wonder, um, for those of us that are thinking about it, can you help us understand maybe what are the top three problems that uh, digital currencies you know, offer the ability to, to solve? So digital currencies are aimed at improving payments, both domestic and international. And that's the key function um, that currencies like Bitcoin were supposed to provide without having to rely on central bank money or traditional financial institutions, such as commercial banks or even credit card providers. Now it turns out that domestic payments in many countries are inefficient, people don't have access to them. So cryptocurrencies were seen as a way of being able to conduct these payment transactions even if you have an economy that doesn't have a well-functioning financial system or where the central bank provided money is not well trusted. International payments are another dimension where certainly technological disruptions can improve the structure of the payment system. Right now there are complications related to multiple currencies, different technological protocols, different languages. So all of these are very vulnerable to technological disruptions. So if you reduce the barriers to both domestic payments and to international payments, you can have people more easily participate in the financial system and conduct payment and tra uh, transactions. This is good for customers, this is good for businesses. If you think about international payments, it's good for economic migrants sending remittances back to their home countries, it's good for importers and exporters, households that may be looking for international portfolio diversification opportunities. So once you get beyond payments, it actually facilitates a lot of transactions, both at the domestic and international levels, that can make economies function much more efficiently. It's so interesting. You know, it sounds like huge opportunities uh, with payments and transactions. You know, uh, some have written that there are maybe broader, you know, there, there are broader uh, prospects for maybe tokenization that are, you know, in addition to, you know, uh, uh, you know, potential uses for transactions and so forth. And, you know, a unit of energy or uh, uh, broadband on a Wi-Fi that's in excess. Um, do you view that kind of there's a larger digital revolution going on with uh, with sort of those sorts of things that, you know, might apply to all aspects of life? Or really are we thinking about the big impacts of these innovations are going to be indeed with, uh, you know, they're going to be indeed mostly for uh, transactions uh, and, and currency use? So if you think about the real legacy of Bitcoin, I think it is going to be this technology called blockchain. So what blockchain can be thought of at a very simplistic level is basically just a digital ledger um, that is maintained on multiple computers around the world and synchronized in real time. Now this provides one very important element of functionality which we haven't had so far, which is how to establish ownership of a digital asset in a secure fashion. Now once you can establish that element of ownership, it makes it much easier to create tokens that essentially represent underlying assets which could be either digital themselves such as financial assets say stocks or bonds or even physical assets such as a car, a house, uh, a piece of art. So all of these can be represented as tokens and now you can have even purely digital objects where the ownership is secure and where you can actually uh, exchange ownership in, um, in exchange for other financial assets or for um, you know, other pieces of art, for instance. So this creates an ecosystem um, that we haven't had quite so far, and it creates a range of possibilities because now you can conduct a lot of transactions digitally, and you can even create objects that are purely digital and trade them as well. So I think we're in for a lot of excitement using this blockchain technology to conduct existing ways of business more efficiently, but also to create entirely new forms of assets and doing business. Dr. Prasad, thank you so much for spending the time with us. UVIC 2022, thank you very much.